Jordan Downs of a 700 unit public housing apartment complex in Watts, Los Angeles, California. It houses 103 different buildings. It has a population of over 2,500 people. And it's also the home and found a location of the Great Street Cribs, the GSCs, or the Baby Low Cribs. Today we'll go over some known stories, the history, and the current state of the Grape Street Cribs. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. On August 4th, 2013, known Grape Street Crip member Marvin L. Vidal was headed to his house near the Jordan Down Housing Projects in Los Angeles, California, when shots rang out. Vidal was shot in his arm, and 645 caliber shell cases were found near his house. When questioned by the police, Vidal was uncooperative and declined to offer any information regarding the identity of the shooter or the shooters. You know what they say, real OGs, they move in silence. So of course, he went snitching like some of you out there. Fast forward a few weeks later on September 23rd, at about 2.30 p.m., Vida was sitting outside his girlfriend's apartment in the Jordan Downs, waiting for her to come out. When the car drove up, and one or more of his occupants fired several shots at Vida. He dodged a few and ducked off, but he still suffered a grazing bullet wound to his head. Vida was sent to the hospital for treatment, when officers arrived at the scene to speak with Vidal about the incident, he ripped off his monitoring equipment and went home. Witnesses alleged that Vidal was pissed. He was filled with rage. He was ready for war. Cops alleged that Grape Street Crips Vidal, Kevin Phillips, and Christopher Ladd went on the shooting free for revenge. But we will get into this a little bit later. But to keep it short, the bounty hunters who occupy the Nickerson Gardens and the Grape Street Crips are like bloody rivals, man. They've been going at it for years, for years, way back, like way back. And they've been at each other's necks like for like decades now. I say this because it's alleged that the Grape Street Crips members put in a lot of work in the area after Vida was shot. Later that night, Kevin White at about 7.25 p.m., a member of the bounty hunter blood was in the front yard of his residence at the Nickerson Gardens when a Chevrolet Tahoe pulled up to the curb. Thinking when it was an ally, White briefly approached the Tahoe. He walked up, you know, he was about to say what's up to him, but after realizing it was the ops, he turned, and he began to ran back into his yard. As he ran back though, two men got out of the Tahoe and repeatedly fired multiple fatal shots at White. Four bullets recovered from White's body and 11 cases recovered for the scene were fired from a 9mm handgun and two other cases recovered for the scene were fired by a 45 caliber handgun. The night definitely wasn't over for the grapes though because later that night at around 7.50, Marquise Broder, a member of the rival PJ Watts Crips was visiting his girlfriend Latricia McQueen's at her apartment in Imperial Court's apartment. When the night was over, Broder walked out of McMean's apartment and several gunshots rang out. That's when McMains looked outside and saw a man getting into a minivan. Two of the men entered the minivan through the sliding door in the rear passenger side, and the other got in the front passenger seat. McMains saw one man put a weapon into his waistband before the minivan drove off, but not before one of the men would scream, fuck you nigga, this great. McMains ran outside and found Brider, who had been shot six times. A gunshot wound to his head, then a fatal shot. The four bullets recovered from his body and four cases recovered from the scene of the shooting were fired by a 9mm handgun and four additional cases recovered from the scene were fired from a 45 caliber handgun. Later on, LAPD was patrolling the area when they stopped and caught some men standing in front of a minivan about a mile away from the Jordan's Down housing projects. The cops searched the minivan and a load of 45 caliber handgun were found in the minivan driver's seat. It was determined that the 45 caliber handgun matched the 45 caliber handgun casings recovered from the scene of white and brighter shooting. Ultimately, all three of the Grape Street Crips were sentenced to life without the possibility of the parole plus 25 years to life for the gun. At around 8 p.m. on October 23rd, 2004, Marco Vasquez drove his wife and three children to the Jordan Down Housing Project to visit his mother. He parked and saw three young men in the parking area, two riding bicycles and the other just standing there. While his family stayed in the car, Vasquez walked towards his mother's apartment. As he walked down an alley between two buildings, he again saw the three men in the parking lot. This time, the two other men were off the bikes. Vasquez thought this was suspicious, and he became worried about his family. He turned back towards the parking area. As he did so, he heard three young men calling him out and they started to approach him. Daryl Anderson, also known as Lil Derry, a member of the Great Street Crips, and two other young men. Anderson was carrying a gun. When the three young men came towards Vasquez 
and Vasquez immediately pulled out his pockets to show the man he had no money. Yeah, he already knew what was about to happen. He was over everything. He pulled them pockets out. So I swear, I probably would have did the same thing. But anyways, Vasquez surmised that the young men were not at the money, though. They weren't at that. Anderson approached within two or three feet of Vasquez. So Vasquez panicked. He, you know, he got in flight mode. This made him jump. As he jumped towards Anderson, he pushed him, and he fled towards his mother's apartment. That's when one of Anderson's companions told him, shoot. And that's what he did. Anderson fired three or four shots at Vasquez as he ran. Just as Vasquez was reaching his mother house, one of the bullets struck him in the right buttocks. He made it inside his apartment without further injury. They were good, you know, called the cops and everything like that. Here's the thing though, Anderson was on one that day. Earlier at Markham Middle School, Anderson and the companion put a gun to one student's head and later that day, pointed a gun at another student they thought was affiliated with the bounty hunter blood gangs. But once again, a rival gang. Ultimately, Anderson was found guilty of attempted murder and sentenced to a state prison term of 44 years to life, which included a 10-year gang enhancement. Look, I tried to look up Anderson's age. You know, I got information about the prior incidents taking place at a middle school, so it was like kind of safe to assume like this dude was a minor. You know, it was like what, what Tupac say? Show he wanna be. Said he's gonna be a thug. One day he's gonna be. One day he's gonna be. On July 18, 2016, at approximately 3 p.m., the police responded to reports of shots fired on the street in the Nickerson Gardens. Justin Hammer was shot and taken to the hospital. At the crime scene, officers recovered 38 bullet cases from three different semi-automatic weapons. The shooting was partially caught on surveillance cameras that showed a white sedan with a black top and a dark colored sedan passed by Hammer, who was then shot. After the shooting, police officers reported two vehicle descriptions to Detective Daniel Pierce, a dark colored BMW and a white Mercedes with a black top. Pierce went to the Gray Street territory to investigate because there had recently been several shootings between the rival gangs. He saw a white Mercedes with a black top parked at the residence and waited outside for the driver to return. Video surveillance showed that Davion Harris, a Gray Street member, had parked the white Mercedes right after the shooting. Later in the evening, approximately five hours after the shooting, he returned to the car and drove off. Harris was pursued by police and led them on a high-speed chase. He did the dash. He was not trying to get caught. Man, he was gone. He drove into incoming traffic, you know, ran through several stop signs and red lights. Video showed that an object resembling a gun was thrown out of the Mercedes Benz during the chase, but it was never found. Harris eventually pulled over, exited the car, does the dash, and he runs off. A little later, the police discovered him nearby hiding under a car and took him into custody. The pigs ultimately found the other man, Philip Ridge, who was also a Gray Street member and was able to connect the two shooters from the GPS in their phones. The court found a Gray Street member guilty of attempted murder with a firearm and sentenced him to 40 years to life in prison. Danger rated right the Gray Street Crips. Based off of the Great Street Crips' long history and Watts, the reputation that the gang had throughout its years of being active, and the stories along with the ones that I just mentioned, the GFCs received a danger score of a 9 out of 10. What do y'all think though, man? Y'all heard the stories. Y'all think I should've went higher or lower? What do y'all think, man? Give me some stories, let me know in the comments how y'all feel. Do y'all think I should've went lower or higher on this one? Y'all let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. Don't forget, man, give me some explanations why. I wanna know why. I want this to be a conversation. Grape Street Crips are way more than a few stories though. Let's get into who these guys are. Who were the Grape Street Crips? The Grape Street Crips, also known as the Baby Low Crips, our Crip gang started in the Watts section of Southeast Los Angeles, California. They're predominantly the African American gang, but they definitely put on other races as well. As long as you grew up around in the area, have been around long enough, and you don't got no bitch in you, of course. When it comes to cliques, the Grape Street Crips have more than a few to represent the set. They include the Baby Lokes, the Peter Rose Squad, the Peter Rock Squad, the Peter Lokes Squad, the Pirelli Squad, 95th, Bandera Block 97, and 103rd. 103rd Street are also the heart of their neighborhood. Other cliques include the Dust Town Crips, the Dust Town Hogs, and Tip Top. When it comes to territory of these cliques, yeah, the grapes are damn near on every street. And trust, they plan for keeps. Cross them, I guarantee, you'll be the one who end up beat. Arrested in peace. Bars, nigga. The GSCs occupied the Jordan Down public housing projects 
located on Grace Street in West Los Angeles, California. The area also goes from north of 97th Street to south of 100th Street, of 107th Street, between west of Wilmington and east of Alameda. When it comes to geography, they are the largest Crip neighborhood in Watts and the second largest overall black gang in the area, only second to the Bounty Hunter Bloods and the Niggas and Garden Housing Projects. When it comes to colors, the Baby Low Crips, they wear blue. They low, cuz. In addition to wearing blue, they wear the color purple too. And if you don't know by now, why they have on all that purple and have the grape in their name, they're named after the north-south street in Watts called Grape Street. But quick question for the Gray Street Crips. Are anyone with their ears tapped in with the streets? Does the gang have any professional teams or logos to symbolize the gang? I looked through like pictures and all that and I couldn't find anything but a lot of purple for the greats. But y'all let me know in the comments. Y'all let me know. The GSCs are known for having a heavy part in the drug trade throughout the 80s all the way up to this day. In fact, in 2018, there was a 10 count indictment against several alleged members of the Great Street Crips for possessing a PCP and hundreds of gallons of highly toxic precursor to chemicals used to manufacture PCP. According to the 10 count indictment, the PCP manufacturing was led by Alfonso Eugene Foster, who was a senior member of the Great Street Crips. There's been several other drug related indictments on the Great Street Crips over the years as well. But trust, the Gray Streets are a lot more. They have an in-depth attachment to the city of Watts and has earned the gang its respect in not only California, but around the nation as well. History of the Gray Street Crips. What card they run with? Subsets, clicks, allies, passing current beefs, and a lot of other things. The Gray Street Crips history and formation is based off of the gang's demographic. Before we get into that, we have to go over some side history of the Watts area. In the 1950s, there was a massive migration of African Americans moving in states from the South in particular. It's crazy because to this day, a lot of the people in the area you have, they have like a Southern accent when they speak. You can hear it in their voice, even in today's generation. But anyways, from states from like Memphis, New Orleans, you know, they all came to sunny California. Looking from the outside, they seen beautiful beaches, great weather, and beautiful properties. But the reality once arriving to the sunny state of California was much different than the initial thought. Watts was 95% white before white flight took flight in the area. And these wasn't the kumbaya, hey, welcome to the neighborhood white. Nah, these was members of the Ku Klux community of racist boys and girls. Basically the forefathers and the mothers of the Karens and the racist pigs we see today. Well that 95% made it hard for the new population of blacks and Latinos and Mexicans who were starting to move into the area. They made it their goal to terrorize them, oppress them, and hinder any growth they thought was possible in hopes of pushing them out or keeping them out of certain areas and watts. Depression got so deep that they even put a law in place to make sure minorities were basically limited to the one section of Los Angeles, California at the time, South Central. It limited them from purchasing properties from more than 80% of Los Angeles County at the time. So, what happens when a population is oppressed, threatened by acts and promises of violence from other factions, and mentally pushed to the edge for tolerating all the bullshit? Groups will start to pop up and protect themselves. And this is exactly what played out in the Watts area. Small gangs in the area started to pop up like the Linwood Paragons, the Elm Street Watts, and the Watts Barrio Grapes. Now these were predominantly Mexican gangs, but in the beginning, a lot of these gangs had a heavy presence of African Americans, especially the Watts Barrio Grapes. The Watts Barrio Grapes were predecessors of the Grape Street Crips. At one point, the Mexicans called themselves the Southside Barrio Grape Street, and the black members won by Eastside Barrio Great. Eventually, the African Americans started to join down Crips around 1973. And by 1976, the Join the Crown Crips transitioned their name to the Great Street Crips. Even though the Great Street Crips was around when the Gangster Crip versus Neighborhood War started, they never chose to run with the car, like a lot of the other Crips did at the time. Because of this, they're cool with some gangs in the Gangster and the Neighborhood car. Allies of the Great Street Crips. Allies of the GSCs include the Southside Barrio Great. Like I already mentioned, this gang was a predecessor to the GSCs and used to be one gang. But even though they parted ways in the 70s, the gang still maintains a close relationship and share common enemies. Other allies include the A-Tray Gangsta Crips, the Playboy Gangsta Crips, the Harlem Rolling 30s, and most Compton Crips. There was actually an alliance that dates back to the 80s called the Hubbard and Dubbin Movement that involved Crip gangs and Compton and Watts. 
Hub is another name for Compton, Hub City, and the dub is a reference to W, Watts. Of course, the GCs was a part of this alliance, but they include other games like the Nutty Blood Compton Crips and the Front Hood Compton Crips as well. Rivals of the Great Street Crips. The Baby Low Crips have a long list of rivals. Basically, if you ain't a grape, you an enemy. And if you an enemy, you might end up resting in peace. Or peace is. Bars, nigga. <laughs> nah, seriously, the GC's rivals include the PJ Watts Crips, Forensia 13s, the Circle City Pie Rules, the 10 Line Gangster Crips, the Fudge Town Mafia Crips, the 9 Nine Mafia Crips, and also they beef hard with the East Coast Crips as well. But the most well known beef though is definitely gonna be the Bounty Hunter Watts. Beef with the Bounty Hunter Bloods. This war was probably the most deadly and most wide known beef in the streets of Watts. And unfortunately, it claimed the lives of many members on each side. The Downey Hunter Bloods were located in the public housing apartments called the Nickerson Gardens, and the gangs used to be back and forth with each other, basically terrorizing each other. With Sister Watch Truce in 1992, the rivalry has not been as intense as it was in the 1980s and early 90s, but the beef does flare up periodically. But the truth efforts that took place in Watts, it should be a good example of like what can be accomplished in Los Angeles. Like, Truth, you know, it lasts about a year or so, something like that. I think it was about two years. Y'all let me know in the comments how long it really was, if you guys know the exact date. But, it, you know, it was dope to see them come together. Like, it's a, a dope flick of, like, the rags tied together. You see two gang members, and they walking up to the cops. Like, bro, that's an epic moment for Los Angeles. Like, we definitely need some more of those. We definitely need some more of those. Prominent figures from the sets. And who the OGs, the YGs, the rappers, shit like that. Great Street Crips have a lot of OGs and YGs that have helped make the game what it is today. But doing my research, I found a few OGs and YGs who are no longer with us. So rest in peace to Raymond Lee Arnold, also known as Mafia Ray, who passed July 16, 2016. Rest in peace to Brandon Bullard, also known as BL, who died on January 27th of 2008. Rest in peace to Brandon Bullard. Rest in peace to Eddie Simpson, also known as Eddie Boy, who passed March 4th, 1986. A few of the OGs include Alfonso Eugene Foster, also known as GL, Dwayne Sherrills, and Crazo. The Grace have some rappers from the set who have been putting in work for the set as well. If you don't know by now, O3. Hey man, my bad. I ain't got bars like him. But yeah, if you don't know about O3, Grito Ben from the set, man, you definitely been living under the rock. For real, for real. He's been doing his thing in a rap game for a while, bro. He started taking off though in around 2017. Unfortunately, he's serving a 20 year bid in the feds due to a drug case he caught while traveling out of state. So, free 03 on that note. A few more of the rappers include Lil 100 and Project Baby Twin. Yeah, this nigga Project Baby, he hard. I just found out about him and doing my research, but man, I feel like hitting a couple licks myself after listening to this nigga, like just pulling up on the ice and letting off a few shots, bro. No cap, nigga. I <laughs> uh, know, look. It's some battle rappers though, man, and they've been doing their thing for the set as well. You got Arsenal the Rebel, he's from the set, and also Daylight, he's from the set as well. Yeah, I just found out he was from the set though as well, but he's hard, man, crazy flow. Y'all gotta check out his battles. Either this nigga will have one a new outfit, a new demeanor, or he's gonna do some wow shit in the battle. And I promise y'all, if y'all don't like his flow at all, I guarantee you're gonna be entertained. I promise you're gonna be entertained. They also have some out of state rappers as well, like Black Boy JB and Emily Chopper. Also, doing my research though, I found out, you know, a few people were saying that Pooh Shiesty is from Grape Street as well. Are there any Memphis rappers or any Memphis grapes who are tapped in or anybody tapped in who know? It's Pooh Shiesty from Grape Street. Y'all let me know in the comments. Current state of the Grape Street Crips. The Grape Street Crips are definitely still operating out of the Jordan Downs and remain one of the most well-respected and feared games in not only Watts, California, but in different states as well. They have success in Tennessee, New Orleans, Florida, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Cincinnati, Texas, Georgia, and even Japan. Yeah, the Grapes is international as well. Look at my boy with the Jordan Down shirt on, man. Straight rapping for the set, bro. Come on, man. International, that's doing a bit. <laughs> hey, y'all let me know if I'm leaving your state out, though. Rep for your state, bro. Work for your state. But yeah, this gang is still active with a lot of members, and it's still making the gang's presence known today. 
Yeah, just from the personal experience, I say the grapes, they move differently compared to most gangs out there. It's definitely like a sense of family and community with this game. You often hear stories of, of internal beefs and setups within different gangs and stuff like that, but not the grapes. Come drive to the Jordan Downs and get a sense of, you know what, never mind, wait, never mind. Don't come down this way if you don't know anybody. Just take my word for it. I'm gonna keep it 100. It's certain parts of the Gray Streets area that down there used to look like a third world country. But like MLK said, never judge a book by its covers. And on top of that, the locals are working daily to build Watts back to the prominent section of Los Angeles it used to be. And the violence has went down a lot over the years, especially compared to the early 2000s and the 90s and stuff like that. The violence has went down a lot, bro. So that's another blessing, bro. You can appreciate that. In conclusion, if you didn't get anything else from this video, get that score. Know that these cats are known to go to war. They don't just stop in no porch. Nah, nigga, they know to kick in doors. Bars, nigga. Nah, the Grave Street Crips have a lot of history in the Los Angeles County area that has earned the gang is respect in the streets. With subsets across the nation, it's safe to say that this gang has grown a lot over the years. What do y'all think, though? Any crazy stories from the Grave Street Crips? Any crazy calls? Am I forgetting something? Did I leave something out? Did I get something wrong? Y'all let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about this. If y'all liked the video, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe. Hit that bell if you move well. I'm out. Y'all stay safe and dangerous out there.